Well, I've had several requests to review this next locomotive. This is the New Haven I-5 Brass Hybrid Locomotive from Broadway Limited and Paragon 4. I've never reviewed the I-5 on the history of my channel, so let's take a look at what you get in the box and with testing and running on these two locomotives right now. All right, we're going to unbox the large script version. Slide the white sleeve off the box here. Locomotive is in a blister packaging subset into the box under, I call it a little trap door inside that little hidden area is an operator's manual with 29, 31 pages of information, including functions, CVs, etc. There are your default DCC operations on the other side. They have what's called, or actually that's pro mode, where uh, you change CV128 to 1, and you can individually handle lighting and more. And on this side is your standard. So you have these functions listed out of the box. You can always pause that to take a closer look. Sliding the plastic blistering. So I take out one of my uh, coal cars here. You have a smoke funnel, traction tires, and a tool for installation, and a coupler. I presume for the front side plastic bracing falls right off a little clamp here opens up like so and the locomotive comes out and I'll be setting that on something so that uh, it's a little more supported because the turntable is not long enough and we'll get a closer look all right we have a little bit of a surface that we can look at this Kind of without the tinder falling off the turntable there. Headlight obviously in the front, grab iron up top. This is going to be a smoke box door, although really streamlined. It's jacketing and the access would be behind that. Speaking of access, you have a little flip open pilot there where you can roll out a coupler. Now the one installed is a dummy coupler and it's going to be a little hard to get out there but there you go so you can probably see from the side profile better that coupler you can always tuck it back in and close the door so that's a pretty neat little feature there obviously classification lights smokestack up top and handrails that are metal along with running boards for crew access to go along the jacketing. We can zoom in a little now so you can see a better look. If you look to your left there, there's also builder plate information. Then you see all the side rod detail, drivers, those really cool kind of disc drivers with disc overlays onto the spokes, the trailing trucks, with some kind of white highlights and white walled wheels there. And the overall pattern is pretty nice. There's some valve detail as well. Crew cab figures installed. And as we look dead on, you can see that there are, you know, those little arms resting there on the armrest. You've got a window. Boiler backhead detail, you can see some of the gauges popping out right about there. You can see the white face of those gauges. You've got a deck plate that's not going to be even right now because this is kind of sinking in the center from being on a box that really shouldn't be supporting it right now. But that's how we roll here, all willy-nilly. Let's see, roof vent is fixed in this case. 
So I can kind of stick the cab out a little bit so you can see the details further in there. I've got this little mobile light here so you can see the boiler backhead detail a little better. I can keep it in focus. You can see the boiler backhead detail a little better on that cab. Let's talk about the tender realistic coal load. You've got a toolbox, water hatches, crew access ladder, separately applied grabs, coupler cut lever, stirrups down below, and a spring loaded coupler there. And then obviously there's the trucks, which have these little rods up top. I hear that's for kind of crew access and manageability. I'm not sure if that's correct or not, or if it's plumbing of some sort. On the back, we'll get this straightened back out here. You've got a rear light, the crew access ladder I was just talking about. There's also the gallon specification and road number there as well. And on this side, look at all of that plumbing under the firebox. We'll take a close look at that. It's quite a bit there. Got some valves and a whole lot of plumbing just hanging out there off of the wheel. Wiring obviously is a multi-plug pin, male and female connection already hooked up for you out of the box. As we work our way back towards the front of this locomotive, you can see again the disc driver is a little closer and there's also that valve kind of group of uh, plumbing that we see there. Eccentric crank, pistons, lead trucks, builder plate, and your number boards aft of your classification lights, and then all of the jacketing. We've got the throttle assembly. Pretty nice locomotive, very streamlined in appearance. There's a close look at the pilot. And another look at the front. Let's get into just the quick differences on the other version and we'll move on to operation. Okay, only difference with this one is the tender. And the road name, obviously. This is New Haven instead of the New Haven and Hartford and Cursive. Everything else appears to be the same. I could be wrong. I am no expert on the i5, so, but there is a quick 360 of another version. All right, we've got the scale zeroed out so that we have a proper platform, and it's one pound, 10.7 ounces. That's 26.7 ounces total, 756 grams. We've got the NMRA compliance here. Very easy to tell because the flanges just fall in if everything is proper. It's also a quick look at the bottom for you. You've got a speaker on the bottom with pickups and smoke on and off underside here. And there's a look at the bottom of the locomotive. Everything is engaged. There's two ways to start. The Broadway Limited I-5 locomotive, and that's with an extended startup and shutdown with F9 or just moving it. We'll do the extended right now. So you hear the engineer go up to the locomotive, the ballast under his feet, gets in the cab, starts turning knobs, dynamo spools up, headlight comes on, and then the smoke starts. So, pretty cool. 
Here is F0, which is the headlight. It's already on. Dynamo spools down also as you turn it on and off. Here's the bell. Here's the whistle. Here's the alternate whistle on 22. So you hear that quill built in there, F3's coupler sounds. You have to move it to get that sound. There we go, F4, air pump. F5 is blow down, chuff, increase. F6 is water fill. F7 smoke on and off. Okay, 10's coal auger. We'll just skip ahead a little bit here. Eleven's water injector, 12's brake set release, 13's grade crossing, we'll hit that. Fourteen station sounds. Fifteen's yard radio chatter. So 16 is a uh, maintenance radio chatter. There's a whole bunch of chatter, background sounds, and industrial sounds. Also, you have macro playback and macro record. Records F27, playback's 26. You can record a sequence, play it back. We've covered that multiple times. I'll save some time here by not covering it. All right, we're going to move this at one speed step. Let you see the smooth operation. I'm going to place this AccuTrack speedometer in front. And take a look at how fast it moves at one speed step. 2.3 scale miles an hour there. Give you another view of the locomotive moving at one speed step so you can see for yourself the level of smooth involved. Now people say that it's on kilometers per hour, it's absolutely not, it's on miles per hour and HO scale. The way this AccuTrack 2 speedometer um, actually registers speed and setup is just an indicator light. So that indicator light is down at the bottom, but that does not mean kilometers per hour. I'm gonna go out of reverse here. Hit one just to check the drive real quick. I'm also going to flatten that deck plate for you. So you can see that that does go flat and flush. Pretty smooth. Now you hear that clickety clack sound? That is a feature on function 23 called track effects. As you can see, I just uh, turned it off, so you don't hear that, but it is an option. 
And that is it for slow operation and function testing. Here's a little in the dark action for you. Headlight does illuminate the track pretty well. The cab light will go up after you hit speed step three. I do not see number board or class light illumination. There's your reverse light, also nice and bright. There's your reverse light if you wanted to see it in the light. Here is your pull test. Once again, just like a lot of Broadway stuff, it is pulling the walls apart at, let's just call it over 12 ounces. Pretty couple of height gauge. Looks to be dead on. We'll go ahead and connect it, which is some viewer feedback I got also. And that's dead on. And we'll check the other side. Pardon the dirty fingernails I've been working on the layout this morning. Oh, well, we've got the dummy we'll coupler. We'll do a height gauge test on the dummy coupler just to show you guys. It does also appear to be spot on. Now, the question, the other question I have is, does it connect? And it does indeed connect. So you could probably use the dummy coupler if you were pushing something around or had these double headed. Let's do a recap on these locomotives. Overall, really nice detail. You've got the brass hybrid aspect, which means these are mostly composed of brass. And so you will see a slight price increase over your standard die cast or plastic locomotives. These are not going to be nearly what brass market uh, costs. So it's a really good deal in that sense if you are a brass collector and like the hand craftsmanship of brass. Operation smooth. Don't forget about the Paragon 4 subwoofer. If you want that, you can have that. It never captures on, on camera very well, but it is a trackside experience. Subwoofer I have down on the floor. It's a wireless receiver, and it's sending those signals to put those big deep bass chuffs involved, making it a trackside experience. Smooth operation, a little quick on the speed steps, but sometimes that's to avoid the jerkiness of really setting those lows, but you still have complete control over configuration variables to change those start voltages and stop voltages in many CVs. So people say these are, you can't change things on them. You absolutely can uh, a lot with configuration variables. Don't forget about pro lighting mode where you can individually light up different aspects of the locomotive. Speaking of lighting, I believe the classification lights are a prism effect and they're not operational. I couldn't find operation of those. And that's about it for the lighting features I may not have covered. Thanks for watching. We'll leave you with a run by of these and we'll see you next time right here on the channel. Take care.